Clap your hands up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Just, that is just a sign to show what God will be doing. Amen. And I've, in, I've asked him to prepare messages for pastors. The pastor who I'm working with in this event in South Africa, he is the president of a, of a fellowship of over 1,200 pastors. And they're all coming to the event. So he has asked me to me to, to be able to minister to these pastors. Last time I did, I was studying the pastor. I began to preach to these pastors. They removed their wallets and start throwing their wallets at me. Start throwing their car keys at me because they, they were just overwhelmed. Amen? And I said, I'm going to leave that department for you. So not only will he preach with me at the major event in the stadium, but also I've asked him to be able to prepare sessions where he's going to speak to pastors. And we're expecting hundreds of pastors to sit down and listen to your pastor share the love and the power of God in their life. You know? And the most uh, significant thing is, is that if you can preach to a church, that is great. But if you can preach to their leaders or their pastors, you influence even more. Because if we can influence the leader, then you can influence the churches. Say amen. And we're believing God for a mighty revival in the name of Jesus. Throw your hands up in the air and shout hallelujah. Everybody shout a hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated in this great, great, great presence of God that we have here today. Amen. Before I continue in the word, tonight... I'm going to be doing something very significant and I've asked your pastor to join me in doing that. Both of us are going to lay hands to each individual and I'm going to be using the anointing of oil to anoint everybody. Um, your pastor is such a graceful man and he's trying to work with me to help me do certain things about my ministry that I never I took quite lightly. Uh, media in terms of media we have our own television channel in England but me as a person I don't take serious some other things that are quite important so he's helped me put up a, some things on the website and some ways of be able to deal with things and if I had some materials I would have shown you during the anointing services that I do in Europe and also in Africa the things that happen heavens open rain falls like a flood Yokes break. Demons come out. Say amen. amen. So tonight, I will be doing this. I will, be, I will be anointing everyone with oil together with your pastor. And I would like, and I would like to request everybody to try and come with your family members. And when you come with them, I want you to sit together. Together. In, on, on, on the same rows of, of seats your, fa your father, your mother or, 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 or your brothers together or even your children and your husband and wife sit together now those that you cannot bring with you tonight I would like you to find a picture of them amen find a photo, find a picture, an album where they are, your mother's picture bring them over to church tonight because wherever they are the power of God will touch them and deliver them from every yoke. If you believe, shout amen. amen. So, so tonight is going to be a special night. I may speak for about 15 or 20 minutes only because I know tomorrow some of you are going to work, so I've got to finish the meeting early. But I want to speak just quickly after speaking and then I want to go ahead and get the anointing session going on. Miracles shall happen. Wonder shall take place. But above all, victory is coming home in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, you're blessed and highly favored. And if your neighbor is smiling with you, tell him, you're blessed and highly flavored. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm excited about this place, Pastor. Thank you for the, 
for hearing the call of God as an angel of this house. I want to honor you. I want to bless you. I want to thank you together with the, your wife for the work that God is getting you to do in this great city. And we've just begun. The journey has just begun. We were talking about Argentina. We're talking about Buenos Aires. We're talking about Brazil. We're talking about so many countries in the world, Spain and uh, Germany and Holland, where we can... I'm telling you, the journey has just begun. The world is big. The laborers are few, but the work is plenteous. And we that have given ourselves to serve God, God will make a way for us to get there. In Jesus' name. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. If you can, take your Bibles with me to the book of First uh, Samuel, please. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, praise God. Can I, can I tell you something, Pastor, that I did? I uh, went on your website soon after we met in London and I found the prayer that you've written there for giving. The giving prayer. Um, you've written there. So I started using that prayer for the church. So what we do in our church, and you see it happening, is that people bring their tithes to the house. And then we put a prayer on the screens. And we, we, we confess it. You know the prayer about giving. And we confess it with our tithes. Very powerful prayer. Amen? And we've been doing that for like three or four months now. Every single week. I, was, I stole from you. Amen. Which shows that God has given you certain wonderful things. So we do that for the tithe. People who are giving their tithe, they bring the tithe to the altar, they line up. Then I pray for them. Then they look up on the screens. They confess the prayers. All of them in one, in uniform, in unison, in one accord. They confess the prayers. After confess the prayer, it ends with give our church away. You remember? We confess the prayer. After confess the prayer, then I receive their tithes in my hands and I put them in a basket, and then the whole church now takes the offering. We've been doing that consecutively for the last. So when you come to England in a couple, in a few weeks' time, and you see us copying your prayer, just say, "God bless you." <laughs> God bless you. I thought, eh? ah, your father wrote it. It's a powerful prayer. I, I, I read it and I, I changed everything, so we're using it, and I want it also to go on my website too, if possible. Amen. Praise God. Go to the book of 1 Samuel in chapter 9. Before I read, just look at me and watch what I'm doing and hear what I'm saying. I may have said this earlier in the early part of the service or earlier service, but I want to say it again to bring an understanding to what I came for, to why I came here. I began this morning by saying, Jesus is calling you. The king is calling you. And when the king sends for you, no one has the power to hold you back. You have to come. You must come. Say amen. So this year, this season, it's your turn to come from where you've always been and answer the call of the king. Call to come out of poverty. Call to come out of defeat. Call to come out of failure. Call to come out of all these things that you see happening in your life. Now, those things may be happening. It's not taking away the fact that you're, you're, you're still born again. You still love Jesus. You are bought by the blood of Jesus. Someone say amen. You are a child of God. You have life in you. But yes, you can have life in you and still have issues around your life that trip you and you fall sometimes. Before I read the word, I talked about this man by the name of Lazarus. 
dead for four days, stinking in the tomb. When Jesus came and called for him, Lazarus rose from the dead. When the master calls, even the death, even death has no power to hold you back. Death has to give way because the king's voice is speaking. Hello? Hola? Say amen. The king's voice is speaking. Lazarus, come forth. Death has got to go. Bondages have got to leave. Someone say amen. This man has got to rise up. So Lazarus received life. The way you have received life. The way I received life when once I was dead in sin. And now I have life in Christ. Once you're dead in sin. But now you have life in Christ. The blood of Jesus brought you out of darkness. And into the light of God. Someone say amen. You are once lost but now you are found. You are alive. You are coming. You have come out of the grave. Somebody say hallelujah. And that happens to all of us. And it's happened to all of us who are standing in this house. We are alive in Christ. Somebody say amen. And so when Lazarus came out of the tomb. When Lazarus came out of the grave. I would expect Lazarus to come walking because Jesus is called, has called me. So I'm coming out walking. Someone say amen. amen. I would expect Lazarus to come out running because Jesus has called me out of death. Now I have life. I would expect Lazarus to come out leaping and jumping and praising God because now I'm no longer dead. But my friends, Lazarus did not come in those three ways. Lazarus came. I'm alive, but I can't walk. I'm alive, I can't see. I'm alive, but I can't move my hands. I'm bound everywhere. I am alive. But I am bound. I'm alive, but I cannot go there quick enough. Someone say amen. I am born again. I come to church. I'm alive. But something has tied my feet. I'm born again. I believe in Jesus. But something has bound my feet. I'm born again. I believe in Jesus. But something is tied around me. Somebody say amen. That's why I came. I didn't come to tell you that the blood of Jesus did not save you from your sin. I came to tell you Jesus saved you from sin. Yes, you are alive, but there are some grave clothes around your body that must be moved in the name of Jesus. And I said, you do not need a prophet to tell you that something is wrong in your house. In Africa, we have so many prophets. Amen? And they come and tell you, that says the Lord, you didn't sleep last night. I knew that. That says the Lord, you have no food on your table. I know I have no food on my table. I don't need a prophet to tell me what I already know. Tell me what I don't know. Tell me how to come out. Tell me how to remove these things out of my life. Someone say amen. So Lazarus had grave clothes but he was alive. And then Jesus told the people who were around Lazarus. Lose him. And let him go. Jesus sent me. To lose you. From your family curses. To lose you from some things that you don't understand. To lose you and let you go. And when you're loosed, you will begin to go. Somebody shout hallelujah. 
If your neighbor is clapping, you must be embarrassed about yourself. You should clap as well because I tell you what, the miracle is coming to your house in the name of Jesus. And so Lazarus received life from death but also received life abundantly by being able to do what he could not do before. Someone say amen. That's why I tell people, you can sit in church and still be bound. You can jump and praise God and still be bound. You can sing even in a choir and shout hallelujah, but still turn out to be like your mother turned out to be. Still fail like your father failed. Someone say amen. amen. Still think of committing suicide like non-believers are committing suicide. But I'm in church. But I believe Jesus. Yes, no problem. Remove the grave clothes from your body. Somebody has got to help you because you can't do it yourself. That's why you're coming through these doors into this place. The Lord will remove every grave cloth from your body. You will see clearly now where you need to go. You will go where you're supposed to go. What should take you 10 years, you can do it in one year. What should take you 20 years, you can do it in two years. Receive in the name of Jesus because the grave clothes are out of your life. Slap your neighbor's hand and say, receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Receive in the name of Jesus. Lift both your hands above your head. Every single body here, every single person. Say, Father, I believe in your word. I trust your word. I receive your word. Loud, I receive your word. I receive your word. I receive your word. Deliver my life. Deliver my house. Deliver my family. Jesus, deliver me. Deliver me today. This is my day. Set me free. Set me free. Set me free. In the name of Jesus. If you believe it, clap very hard. Clap and praise God. My smiling can fool you to show you that everything is okay with me. But the fact that something is wrong in my life, I'm just hiding it in a smile. My dressing can fool you to make you think that I've got a lot of money. And I live good. The size of my body can, can fool you and make you think that everything is going well in my life. I look healthy. But the truth of the matter is, there's no health in there. There's pain. There's suffering. There's defeat. There's repetitive failure. Oh my God, in the name of Jesus. Can you stand quickly? I got to break this. Can you stand quickly? Raise your right hand, please, please. And everything I ask you to do, you do it loud and clear. Say, in the name of Jesus. Please say louder. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Every pattern. Every pattern. Every cycle of failure that comes again and again. And again, and again, and again, I break your power. Now, I break your power. Now, you believe that? Clap your hands hard and praise the Lord. One more, one more, one more confession before I go to the world. One more confession. Say, raise your right hand. Say, every barrier, every barrier before my life, in the name of Jesus, I command you right now, 
Move. Move. Say with power. Move. Move now. In the name of Jesus. You will never hold me back. Never again. I shall get there. You will never stop me. In the name of Jesus. I will get there. In the name of Jesus. Move out of my way. Get out now. 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 You believe it? Clap your hands hard and praise the Lord. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Can you find your wife? Can you find your husband if they're here? And stand next to them and hold their hands. Please do that. If they're not here, just hold someone's hand. Look at them. Just look at them. Just look at them. No smiling. This is serious. If you want to smile, you do it in the bedroom. <sighs> Say, the Lord has brought us here to change our lives. Enough is enough. We must go forward. As I pray for you. And you pray for me. The anointing of God shall come upon our house. Touch our family. For this is our day. In the name of Jesus. I want you to pray for your wife. And I want you to pray for your husband. And I want you to pray for the person who is next to you. With your voice lifted. This is how you're going to pray. Listen. This is how you're going to pray. Every cycle of failure. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Now, now, some of you, you know what type of failure your husband has been going through. So you can call it by name. Maybe they can't get a job. You can call it by name. Somebody say amen. And I break your power in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Number two, you're going to pray every barrier. Barrier is something that stops you from going where you're supposed to go to. It says, you know what? You can never go there. You will always remain here. For the last 20 years, your family has never been there. It's always been here. But today, you're going to say, every barrier that has stopped us as a couple from getting there. Maybe there is your house. You will never own a house. You will always rent for the rest of your life. But today, you shall break that barrier. And not just own it, you shall own it without any loan in the name of Jesus Christ. Because you pray and you believe because the barrier has been broken. Maybe the barrier of finances, it can't come your way. So you know what barriers facing your family and facing your lives. You're going to pray right now. And I want you to lift your voice. Those two prayers. Number one, it is every cycle of failure. Cycle means year after year. Time after time, failure comes, failure goes. Failure comes, failure goes. Oops, I'm just about to make it. Oh, I lose it. Oh my God, I'm about to testify. Mm, it's not there anymore. I'm going to get the job. No, I failed again. I'm going to make money in my business. It's not working out anymore. I'm going to, no. The cycle of failure must break out of your life. You must succeed in the name of Jesus. Now, listen to this instruction. You pray loud. Where's the keyboard player? Young man, please come on. You pray loud. Someone say amen. You pray loud. You pray loud. Whenever you pray against forces and powers, you have to pray with authority. You have to pray zealously. You have to pray with power. You have to, Bible says, the kingdom of God suffered violence. And the violent take it by force. The devil is not going to just walk away because you say, Satan in the name. You command it to walk. It's a military zone. Because he doesn't want to go. But by force, it's got to go. Pray now. Now, stop praying. Stop praying. Stop praying. Cycle of, pain, of failure and barrier. Lift your voice. Cycle of failure. Lift your voice and pray.
Continue praying. Continue praying. Continue praying. Continue praying. Continue praying. Lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands, lift your hands. Raise your hands, raise it up. Stretch, stretch out your hands. Stretch out your hands above your head. Say, in the name of Jesus, I believe the word. I receive the word. I have life of Christ in me. And all the bondages in my mother's house shall be destroyed because of the anointing. I receive the word and I believe the word in the name of Jesus. Lift your voice and holler, shout hallelujah. Clap your hands and praise the Lord. Be seated. Be seated. Thank you. Praise God. Let's go quickly go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 9. I, I'm going to take about 20 or so minutes to complete this. And then I want to just pray for a few people. And then I'll prepare you for tonight. This program here that I'm doing this uh, morning is going to be preparing you for this evening service. Say amen. I want to urge every single person here today under the sound of my voice to make it a point of showing up tonight. Especially if you've been here yesterday and today and now that you're here this morning... It is important that you start and you finish. Many times we don't see our breakthroughs because we leave things halfway. We, we don't see our miracles because God begins to do stuff in our life and then we walk out before it's completed. Someone say amen. We want to do something, but we don't necessarily complete to do what we wanted to do. So tonight, God, he who began a good work in you on Friday, he wants to complete it tonight. David said, I was glad when they said that to me, come let us go to the house of the Lord. He knew that if he doesn't get there, he might not receive what he wanted. So somebody ought to be glad to get here tonight. Because how will you receive if you don't show up? Say amen. In the house of the Lord. The Bible says, there's bread in Bethlehem. There's bread in Bethlehem, Judah. So I've got to get to Bethlehem to receive the bread. Tonight, there's a bread coming into your house. Get into the house of God and receive the bread. And you will never be hungry again. I say, you will never be hungry again. I say, you will never be hungry again. You don't have to compare yourself with the celebrities. No, leave them alone. Jesus is Lord. He can turn your life around. They ought to look at you and say, I want to be like you. Say amen. amen. The celebrities that you see on television, they should be looking at you and say, I want to be like you. Some will say amen. Because there's something about your life that they want. Tonight, may the doors open for you. Oh God, I give you praise. Pastor, the word of God speaks in the book of... Uh, Sorry, the Bible says, and you shall declare a thing, and it shall be established. So, whatever I say, I'm declaring.